Welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a couple different ways that we can move our sprites or our characters around the screen. The first method we're going to do is just having the sprite move by moving the mouse. So the way this is going to work, anytime I move my mouse around the screen, the sprite will just follow the mouse. Alright, so to set this up, what we're going to do first is we're going to go under Events. I'm going to grab the top one that says When Green Flag Clicked and move it onto the middle screen. And let me go ahead and just make this a little bit larger so we can see better. The next thing I'm going to do is go under the Control tab, grab a Forever Loop, place it right underneath the Green Flag Clicked. So this, what this is going to do, anything I put inside of this forever loop, it will repeat it until I stop my code. And the action that I want to repeat forever is to have the cat go to the mouse pointer. Since that's a motion, I'm going to go under the motion tab. And I'm going to grab the one that says go to random position. But instead of random position, I'm going to be changing that to the mouse pointer. Now I can click and drag it inside the forever loop. And what my code will do, when I click the green flag, it will always go to the mouse pointer. Let's go ahead and test this out and see what it looks like. So I'll start by clicking on the green flag. And now wherever I move my mouse on the screen, the cat will follow the mouse. Alright, so this is a very simple uh, control setup. Let's go ahead and look at something a little bit different. So now, instead of moving the mouse around the screen to move the character, let's move the character by pressing the arrow keys. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this. I'm going to go back to the events tab and I'm going to be grabbing the second one that says when space key pressed. I'm going to be changing this one to the up arrow. I'm going to grab another one and change this one to the left arrow. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. This one is going to be the down arrow. And finally, over on the side here, I'm going to change this one to the right arrow. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so everything fits on the screen. And let's just go ahead and space it out. All right, that looks good. All right, so what I'm going to do next, I have to figure out what to put under each of these events. So since it's going to be movement, I'm going to head back to the motion tab. And I have a couple different options for this. I can try the move 10 steps. That'll work, but there's gonna be some extra work that I'll have to do on top of that. So to make things easier, what I'm gonna do is choose this one right here that says change X by 10. And I'm gonna put that one under the right arrow key. To get my cat centered again, I'm going to change its X position over here to zero. And then the Y position to zero. Okay, so now my cat is in the middle of the screen again. And while we're doing this, I want you to pay attention to what happens to the X value right here. So in my code, what I'm telling it to do, every time I press the right arrow, I should be changing my X value by 10. And let's go ahead and see what happens. So when I click my right arrow, I see my cat moves a little bit to the right and my X position changed by 10. If I click it again, I move a little bit more to the right and now my X value is at 20. And I'll do it a few more times. So it's at 30, 40, 50. And I hope you can see going to the right requires a change, a positive change for the X value. So I need to add on to it. So thinking about that, how would I get my cat to go to the left? So instead of adding to the X value, I need to subtract from it. I can do that by starting by getting another change X by 10. This, this time, instead of a positive 10, I'm going to put a negative or a minus sign in front of it. And now every time I press the left arrow key, it'll subtract 10 or add negative 10, whichever way you want to look at it. So I'm going to press the left arrow key. Now I see that my X value went from 50 to 40. And I'll do this a few more times. So now it's going to go from 40 to 30, then 20. 10, 0, and then we'll get into negative numbers. So negative 10, negative 20, and I can keep going all the way to the edge of the screen. Okay, so that covers the left and the right movement. So the left and the right movement is controlled by the X value. 
So if we look over here to the Y value, that's going to be what is going to control my up and my down movement. So I need to look over in the code menu and I'm going to grab the one that says change Y by 10. And I'm going to start by dragging that right underneath the up arrow. So now every time I press the up arrow, it's going to add 10 to my Y value. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to press the up arrow. It moves my cat a little bit up and I see that my Y value went from zero to 10. A few more times, so it's going to go from 10 to 20, then 30, 40, and it'll keep going up by 10 as long as I press the up arrow. To get it to go down, I'm going to do a change Y by 10. And this time, just like for the X value, instead of adding 10, I want to subtract 10. So I'm going to put a minus sign or a negative in front of the 10. And now every time I press the down arrow, it'll subtract 10 from my Y value and move my cat down. So now I have all four keys set up so I can move my cat anywhere on the screen. So I'm just moving it around using the arrow keys. All right, and this is a pretty good setup so far, but it's definitely not perfect. One issue that it has, if I want to try to move by holding down one of the keys, so let's say I hold down the right key. If I do that, eventually it gets going, but there's a little stutter. So it takes a little time before it actually gets going. And we want to try to fix that. So we want to have a smoother motion. And the way we can do that is we're going to be using a forever loop with a couple if then statements. So I'm going to start by just getting rid of what we have on the screen so far. So I'm just going to drag them off to the side. And I'm going to be starting by going to the events tab. I'm going to grab a win green flag clicked and move it onto the screen. Next, I'm going to go to the control section, grab a forever loop, and remember this one, it will repeat the code forever until we end the program. Next, I'm going to be adding a if then statement. And inside of this part right here, what I want to do is go under sensing, grab the one that says key space pressed, and then place it right in between the if and the then. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it from the space key to the up arrow. So what the sensing tab does, it looks for input. So the input it's looking for is the up arrow being pressed on the keyboard. If it senses that happens, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the motion tab and I'm going to be changing my Y by 10. So this is very similar to what we just did, but the end result will be a much smoother movement. So let's go ahead and test what we have so far. So when I press the green flag and I press the up arrow, I see that I'm still moving. And let me move my cat down to the bottom. And I'm going to hold the up arrow now. And I see that I have a much smoother movement without that stutter at the beginning. So as soon as I press it, it immediately starts going. All right, so now all we have, all we have to do is just finish this up. So since I have four arrow keys, I'm going to be adding three more of these if statements for a total of four. I'm going to head back to the sensing tab, grab some more of these, one, one for each of them, if it'll cooperate. There we go. All right, so for this one, it's going to be down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. Back to the motion tab. So for the down, that's controlled by the Y value. So I'm gonna grab another change Y by 10. This time it's going to be minus 10, since I wanna subtract Y values. The next one, the left and the right, will be controlled by the X value. So put one of those there and one of those there. The left is moving to the left, so I want to do subtraction or negative, so negative 10. And I will leave the right arrow alone. So let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. So I have four different if statements. So what it's doing is forever. It's checking if one of these arrow keys is pressed. If it senses that one of these arrow keys is pressed, then it'll do the corresponding action. So for example, if it notices that the left arrow is pressed, then it will change the Y by negative 10 until it, I release the key. So as long as I'm pressing the left arrow, it'll continue to do this action down here. 
let's go ahead and test out our completed code. So I'm gonna press the green flag and try to move around the screen. All right, and I see that I have a much smoother movement, so I don't have any stuttering when I stop and start. So it's very similar to what we just did. It's just a minor fix so that I don't have the stuttering. All right, so now that we have movement down, let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we can do with this. So if you want to turn this into a multiplayer game, it's very easy to do. Let's go ahead and start by adding another sprite into the game. So I'm gonna come down to the sprite menu and let me go ahead and grab a bear. You can choose whichever character you want, doesn't matter. Okay, I see that I have no code for my bear right now. And since it's gonna be almost exactly the same code, let's go ahead and go back to the cat. And all I'm gonna do is click on the top here and drag my code to the bear. I know it's on the bear when the bear turns blue. When that happens, I can just let go. And if I check back under the bear now, it has the code, the same code that we just wrote for the cat. If I run my code now, they're gonna move together. So whenever I press the arrow keys, they both move at the same time. That's probably not ideal if you want a two player game. You probably want one player to be controlled by the arrow keys and the other by maybe WASD. Let's go ahead and change that. So under the bear for the up arrow, I'm gonna change that to W. For the down arrow, I'm gonna change that to S. For the left arrow, that'll be A. If I can find it, there it is. And for the right arrow, that's going to be D. D as in dog. Okay, so now it'll do almost the exact same thing, but the bear is gonna be controlled by the W, A, S, and D, and the cat will be controlled by the arrow keys. Let's go ahead and run the code. So I'm going to move the cat with the arrow keys. So I see that it moves freely. And then if I jump in with the W, A, S, D keys, I can move my bear around. And I can move both these characters at the same time. So this will be good if you wanna set up a two player game. You can do something with maybe like you have uh, different objects falling out of the sky and you have a competition to see which one can collect the most objects. You can do a tag game where maybe the bear is trying to chase the cat and you have to try to avoid touching the bear. There's lots of different possibilities and we're gonna be taking a look at some of those in the later videos. This is gonna be the end of the movement tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.